On day one, I spawned in as a baby camel. Whoa, look how tall I am. I also have four hearts. Hey, camel, the race is about to begin. What are you doing? A strange man started demanding things from me. Who does he think he is? I don't answer to you, buddy. I can't see. I can't see. I realized I had the ability to spit, but just as I was about to attack again, a scary figure started speaking. It is time for the great race to begin. Huh? Race? What race? This will be a race through the overworld within 100 days. To prove your ultimate mob abilities, there will be many challenges, curses, and deaths. What? 100 days to go across the overworld? That's impossible! No one's ever done that before! The first curse will begin in 10 days. Let the race begin! And just like that, all the other animals began to race, leaving me in the dust! Luckily, one of my abilities as a camel was speed in the desert, which gave me this awesome dash attack! Ha <laughs> ha! See ya, losers! On day two, I was met with death when some wolves attacked! Well, well, what do we have here? Looks like we have a little snack, boys. Yeah, didn't we see some older camels up ahead? A lost little one. Huh? Older camels? They must be my parents! You hear that? Abandoned by his own kind. Don't worry, we'll make this quick. The wolves lunged at me with great ferocity. Ah! Scream all you want. No one's gonna save you now. He was right, but luckily, my dash attack also did damage to the wolves. But it didn't seem to work too well. I was just a poor little camel. All I could do was run, and so I did. I'm out of here. Hey, get him. The wolves would chase me across the desert for miles, but suddenly, something happened. Water. We need water. Yeah, I'm dying over here. The wolves howled as they died of dehydration. <laughs> Take that. Wait, I've got to get water too. I didn't realize it, but the scorching sun was beginning to dry me out. But luckily, my camel abilities were able to get me across just enough to find a small pond nearby. <laughs> that was easy. Man, this race is going to be a piece of cake. But just as I approached the pond, it disappeared. Wait, no, where'd it go? No! Foolish animals. Do not be fooled by the mirages of the desert. Following an illusion will only result in death. Out of the 300 animals participating in the race, 156 remain. Almost half the animals are dead? Oh, I hope my parents are okay, wherever they are. It started to get late, and so I found a small rock to hide from the wind. I'm so lonely. On day three, it was time I got serious with this race. I managed to exit out of the desert biome and run into a jungle biome to gather some wood for some basic tools, like a wooden pickaxe and sword. Perfect. Now, if only there was some water around here too. It seemed like my worries were resolved as there was a small pond where other animals were drinking. Out of my way, thirsty camel coming through. Whoa, get in line, bud. But I'm so thirsty. I managed to drink all the water from the pond until there was nothing left and grew into a full adult camel with 10 hearts. Hey, what gives? Ever heard of sharing? What is the matter with you? I panicked, so I did what I do best. Uh, uh, look, a tiger! <laughs> There's no tiger around here! Whoa! Whoa! Mm. Now, where did that delicious camel run off to? On day four, I got an early head start while it was still dark out. I met some other friendly mobs along the way. There was a cow and a pig next to me as we were running through the jungle. So, uh, you guys want to team up? I think that's a fantastic idea, Mr. Camel. Yeah, I'm in. With the three of us, we'll get through this race no problem. Yeah, and I'll get to find my family. For the first time, I was happy. It felt good to have friends. Creeper! Suddenly, a creeper appeared, and before they had a chance to run out of the way, it exploded! Guys? Hello? Guys? I was left alone once again. No! 
I realized in that moment, I needed even stronger weapons and tools. If I wanted to defend myself from the enemies of the world, I went off to a nearby cave and gathered some iron ore, which I then smelted to create an iron sword, axe, and pickaxe. I'd like to see anyone try to mess with me now. Suddenly, the ground started to shake as the voice of the Sphinx began to speak once again. By now, you should have already crossed through the jungle and into the next biome. Ruh -roh. Those of you still within shall sleep forever. The Sphinx suddenly shot a giant laser that burned through the whole jungle. Animals were dying left and right from all the fire and lasers. Oh no, the whole place is ablaze. I gotta get out of here. I ran as fast as I could until finally I was out of the jungle. Oh no, the poor animals. Why? On days five through six, I was defeated. I had no friends, no food, and I didn't even know if my parents were alive. Huh? What's this thing? On a lectern that was strangely in the middle of nowhere was a book to my son. Bronzo! This book belongs to my parents! I began to read it, and soon enough, I started to have a vision. Bronzo! Bronzo! Where are you? Oh, we can't find him anywhere! He must be around here. We can't stop now. Wait, those are my parents! Ah, you two are new. You must be so fast and strong. Stronger than these weak llamas I have here. Please, sir, can you help us find our boy? He must be around here somewhere. I have a better idea. Why don't you replace my dead llamas? That's when he took out a sword and killed his own llamas. Wait, why would he do such a thing? The first curse will begin in 10 days. Let the race begin. Huh? The race has started. Bronzo, where are you? Ah, what are you two doing? We're going to lose the race. If you don't cooperate, I'll have to kill you. No! Leave them alone! My cries meant nothing, as this was only the past, and I couldn't change it. Mom! Dad! I won't stop looking for you! The vision had ended, and I was back in the present. It was then that I swore to keep going in search for clues. I won't give up. Except maybe now, because it's dark. By days seven and eight, I was back in the race. I was chased down by some creepers, but they were no match for my spit. <laughs> Take that, losers. The tenth day of the race approaches, and the first curse will be released. If you are still alive, good luck. Oh no, I gotta get out of here. I have to hurry. I ran as fast as I could, but then I heard a cry for help. Uh, huh? I is someone there? I, I have to win the race. It was a baby turtle, no more than one day old. Um, I don't know how to tell you this, but turtles are kind of slow. It'd be impossible for you to win this race. Trust me, I was a turtle once for a hundred days. But I have to. My parents, they, they left without me. The tragic story of the turtle reminded me of my own family. I couldn't leave the poor thing like this, so that's when I decided. How would you like to work together? Really? You'd work along with a creature such as myself? That's right, but you're going to need a name. So how about Sam? Uh, actually I already have a name. It's Raffi. Oh, okay, let's go with that. And that's when we set off as a team to win the race, survive the Sphinx curse, and find our families. On day nine, we were tired. Hey, hey Bronzo, you don't wanna give up? Yeah, wait. No, that's quitter talk. Before I could continue any further, the Sphinx spoke once again. Tomorrow is the start of the first curse. Rains of fire. Wait, does that mean he's going to rain fire? Oh no. We're gonna have to build a shelter. Raffi was right. We began to create a shelter in the desert to prepare for the big day. We wanted to avoid using as much wood as possible so the fire wouldn't spread and destroy everything. Hey, I got some seeds. Maybe we can get some crops going. That's a good idea, Raffi. We laid out the seeds to get a nice farm going and then made some simple rooms, one for each of us. At nighttime, we were faced with some terrifying zombies 
enemies, but they were no match for my spit ability and boost attack. <laughs> Take that, losers. You're no match for us. Yeah, get him, Bronzo. That was a close one, Raffi. Let's get as much rest as we can. We ate some food to heal up, and as a result, Raffi grew into a full-sized turtle. Yo, Raff, you look dope. During day 10, Raffi and I decided it was best to make a move on. Let's take anything we think is important because we won't be back. Great idea. Okay, Raffi, this is it. When we get out of here, flames will be unleashing upon our heads. On three, we run out. One. Two. Three. Ah! We ran with haste, but after a few seconds, we realized there was no fire falling from the sky. Hey, what gives? That dumb sphinx was lying to us. That's good news for us, don't you think? Yes. Give me a moment while I gather some crops from the farm. Having Rafi as a teammate was great, but I also had doubts if I could trust him until the end. All right, ready to make a move on. Let's go. From days 11 through 15, Rafi and I had been traveling nonstop. We were exhausted. Oh, we can stop now, buddy. You fools. You think I forgot about the raining fire? Have fun with this. Uh-oh. Oh, Raffi, you good? Bolts of fire rained down from the skies above, unleashed by the curse. I froze in shock, but I had a vision of my parents. Honey, look out. It's raining fire. We need to secure a body of water before we burn to death. Snap out of it, buddy. We gotta run. Uh-oh, follow me. We booked it as fast as we could, looking for that precious source of water while fire rained down. Over here, trust me. Just in the nick of time, I spotted a flooded swamp. There, jump in. After a few minutes under the water, the fire had halted and we exited the water. That was epic. How did you think so quickly on your feet? I saw a vision of my parents. They sorta guided me. Well, maybe they're still alive, don't you think? Hopefully I'm not too late. Let's get moving on. From days 16 through 21, Raffi and I tried to make our way out of the swamps and continued this blasted race. Because this is a long distance race, it was important to conserve energy. So we stopped to catch our breath. You know, I'm surprised we haven't run into any of my old friends just yet. Friends? You didn't tell me you had friends out here. Well, I guess they aren't really my friends, per se. Out from the shrubbery came an alligator and they looked hungry. Boy, look what we have here. Dad of soup and a desert horse. I'm much better than a horse. I'm a camel for your information. Shut your trap, you stinking camel. It's dinner time and I want that toe. I say, think fast. Come on, Raffi, let's go. Come back here. Raffi and I scurried away from the gator, but there was a problem. Dead end. Oi. You're dead now, you little buggers. Suddenly, the tiger from the jungle pounced onto the gator. If anyone's eating them, I am. Oh, what the heck? Get it off me. Get it off me. Yeah, get him. Take that, gator. Eventually, the tiger had killed the gator. Now, where was I? Please don't hurt us. I just wanted to say hello. Personally, I've never seen a caramel before. You mean camel? <laughs> That's what I said. You must be participating in the race. I can guide you and your friend here out of the swamp. Awesome, after you. On days 22 through 25, the tiger led us to a desert city with a few pyramids nearby. I stopped to rest, refuel, and look around. Well, this is as far as I go. Desert ain't no place for a tiger. Thanks for the help. Good luck with your journey. The tiger walked away, but I still felt like he had some kind of ill attentions upon us. But I decided to ignore those feelings and make my way to the desert temple. Ooh, I wonder if there's some useful loot I can get from these pyramids. I started to walk towards them, but was interrupted by another vision. My parents looked exhausted and were arguing with the wandering trader. We're so tired. We just want to find our son. Shut your mouth. If you know what's best for you, you'll listen to me and stop complaining. Don't touch her. There's your warning. Don't make me do it again. Dad, you monster. Get away from them. The vision faded away, and I was left worried and furious. Curse that psycho. I have to find them before it's too late. As I turned to leave, I remembered the pyramids that I wanted to explore. No, there's no time. I'll come back later when my parents are safe. I left in a hurry, determined to find them. During days 26 through 29, we continued trekking the lands of the desert. Come on, Raffi. We can't stop now. We came this far. I hear ya. I need to find my parents too, you know. Oh yeah, we will find them too. 
Just then, we were ambushed by husks. You can't pass this part of the desert. We won't let you. I'm finishing this race no matter what. It seems like every mob in the overworld is taking part in this race. All the more reason to win. Eventually, we killed all the husks and left the desert, making it into the savanna. Wait, hold on, Raffi. I know this place. This is where I saw my parents begin their race. Maybe if we find the starting point, we can track back and find them. Exactly what I was thinking. Excuse me, I couldn't help but notice you two look out of place. Oh, hello. Well, we're currently in the Sphinx's race, and I'm looking for the starting point. Oh, I know where it is. That's where I began my race, but I kind of gave up at this point and settled down instead. Oh, could we stay with you for a night? Sure, I don't see why not. The name is Ellie, by the way. We followed Ellie back to her home, and we were surprised at how massive it was. I could fit my entire turtle tribe in here. Well, I am an elephant. We need taller ceilings and bigger doors. Make yourselves at home upstairs. We'll make our way to the line tomorrow morning. We got settled in, and as it got deeper into the night, I couldn't sleep, so I decided to sneak out. I went looking for answers in the wee hours of the morning of day 30, hoping to have another vision of my parents. Come on, give me something, anything. Whew. Breathe in, breathe out. Suddenly, I had another vision. Come on, sweetie. There's no time to watch our steps and be cautious. We need to make haste. Hey, look out! I'll always love you, Raffi. Oh no, we killed some poor turtles. Well, you're the one who took so long to get a move on. I mean, come on now. How long does it take for our camel to get ready? Oh no, my parents killed Raffi's parents. I can't tell him. It'll break his little heart if I do. I better get back inside before someone sees me out here. Interesting. As I snuck back into bed, Raffi had slightly awoken. Renzo? Is that you? Yeah, Raffi, I was just grabbing some fresh air, but now I'm gonna go back to bed. Okay, see you in the morning, buddy. I had a hard time getting back to sleep, but eventually I did. Before I was back on the trail between days 31 and 35, I couldn't help but look at Raffi with a sense of guilt. You haven't been speaking a lot. Everything all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I wasn't sure if it was possible to even tell him. I mean, this was the only real companionship I've known during this race. What if he leaves? Could I I blame him? Could he blame me? So many questions rattled around in my head. Raffi, I have something to tell you. Your parents are- All right, folks, let's get moving. We got a long way to go. We proceeded to follow Ellie as she guided us through the savanna. And towards the starting point, I saw in my parents' vision. Now, I'd keep an eye out for any predators out here. Savannah is a dangerous place. Thanks for doing this, Ellie. We owe you one. Don't mention it. It's right up ahead. The ground began to quake as the Sphinx's voice boomed through the skies. The time has come for the next curse. I hope you all enjoy swimming as much as I do. Oh boy, do I enjoy a little dip every now and then. I don't think that's what he meant. Run! A tsunami wave soaring thousands of feet high began rushing towards us with immense velocity. Hundreds of animals around the world were being affected by the tsunami, many of them dying. Ah, I don't think we're gonna make it! Brace yourselves! At the beginning of days 36 to 41, I woke up in the middle of another desert. Oh, my head. Rafi, Ellie, where are you guys? Maybe they're around here somewhere. I went on looking for my friends, but all I could find was miles and miles of sand. I'm gonna die here, aren't I? No water, barely any food. Bonzo, over here! Rafi, buddy, I thought you were a goner. Nope, I'm alive and well, but I think we lost Ellie. I'm gonna miss that girl. Raffi told me he had a vision of his parents too. You're not gonna believe it. I had a vision of my parents just like you. Oh, uh, that's great, Raffi. Um, what did you see? They discovered how to link up nether portals and use it as a way for fast travel. But what about the original base? As long as we put down a nether portal wherever we are, we can use it to go back there. Phew, that's fantastic. We'll have to get some diamonds first. Well, why don't we get some? We? <laughs> sure, Raffi. Let's do it. Raffi and I descended deep into the mines, searching for those precious diamonds. But all we could find was iron. Well, I guess I can make some armor with this. With all the iron we excavated, I was able to make two full sets of iron armor. This is great, Raffi, but we still need those diamonds. Follow me. I'll guide you to them. Raffi, are you sure you know where we're going? Oh, diamonds! 
diamonds! We gathered enough to make some diamond tools, such as a sword, axe, and the diamond pickaxe we needed. Now we just need some obsidian. Let's go get it. We found some lava and gathered a bunch of obsidian. After hours of mining, we emerged successfully. We set up the nether portal and ignited it to power it up. Here's to hoping we make it back to our base and not the nether. The teleportation was successful. And on days 42 to 45, Raffi and I arrived at our original base in the desert. It worked, it worked. Raffi, you're a genius. Since this place was going to be a waypoint we'd come back to, I thought I might spruce the place up a bit. Let's get to decorating. And after adding all sorts of little furnishes and additions to the base, Raffi and I admired our handiwork. But then Raffi noticed something odd. Hey, uh, Brian. Bronzo, have you always been able to levitate? What are you talking about? Oh my gosh. I was hovering above the ground. Then I felt my body being pulled away in the blink of an eye. I was transported before the Sphinx. What's the big idea, huh? I simply wanted to have a little chat with you. You have piqued my interest. Well, let's make this quick. I've got a race to win, you know. You seem very sure of yourself. Of course I am! When I do win this race, what do I get as a prize? Aside from the continued persistence of your life, the winner will be granted one wish. With a wish, the possibilities are absolutely limitless! Have you any idea what you would wish for? Hmm... I thought long and hard about my answer, wanting to make sure it was absolutely right. With that wish, I'm going to use it to find a puppy! <sighs> And then, just like that, as quickly as I was brought to the Sphinx, I was returned to the base with Raffi. What was that about? Let's not talk about it. From days 46 through 49, Raffi and I were back in the race. We took the nether portal back to the place we took a break from. Being so well rested, we had been making great time until Raffi pointed something out. Hey, what's that? What's what? Over there, on the horizon. I saw it too. Raffi was pointing out a desert village just off the track. Wanna take a breather and reset? stock on food? That sounds like a great idea. We changed course towards the village, only to find that it was completely abandoned. Despite how quick we were trying to be, we discovered exactly what befell this village. Mummies! We fought back against these mummies that all wanted to eat us. There's the big one. Bring them down! Raffi and I battled a massive mutant husk who could summon more husks to aid in the fight. With my mobility and spit attack, he was forced to leap into the air to attack us. After a few more well-placed attacks, the mutant husk fell. Yes, Bronzo! We continued the journey, but days 50 through 53 brought us even more chaos. Behold, the next curse of the great race draws near. The ground suddenly started rumbling. What's happening now? In the distance, we could see that Anubis had been spawned in. He was giant and was zapping creatures left and right with his staff. <laughs> Oh no! Raffi, we gotta outrun Anubis! Hurry! We both moved as fast as we could, but Raffi was getting farther and farther behind. He was moving his flippers furiously to try and keep up, but to no avail. I looked around for some way to help quickly and spotted some bushes nearby. Hang on, I have an idea. I led him into the bushes and had him hide until things calmed down. Wait here until it's safe. Are you going to be okay? Of course, I'm strong and fast. There's no need to worry about me now. <laughs> Can I do anything? to help while I hide? Sure you can. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, click the bell notifications so you won't miss the next upload. <laughs> Will do. See you soon, Bronzo. See you soon, Raffi. I'll be right back. I left Raffi there, hoping he would be safe. Little did I know that the tiger from earlier was also hiding in those bushes. During days 54 through 57, I continued my escape from Anubis. Okay, I think I have enough distance on him, but can't keep running forever. Come on, think. I hope Raffi is safe. I could hear the zapping nearing closer and closer, but then I had a brilliant idea. I really hope this works. I'm gonna have to use a lot of sand. After tons of hard labor and sweat, I covered an entire ravine that fell into the void with sand sand so that I could trick Anubis to stand over it. Whew. If this doesn't work, then I'm toast. I waited in plain sight for Anubis, hoping he'd be confident enough to not think twice about my trap. Well, 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 look what we have here. A camel with nowhere to run off to. 
you're right. Please don't kill me, I beg you. You know, you remind me of some other camels I recently ran into. My dear, I don't think my legs are fast enough to outrun Anubis. We must, or we won't be able to find our son. You two better not get me killed. What do we have here? Two camels and an ugly traitor. Please don't hurt us. We're just trying to reunite with our son. He's been lost for days. Mm. And what of you, traitor? None of your business, you mask-wearing freak. Very well, then. You two camels get to the move on. I'll spare your lives this time around. But if I do run into you again, it will be the last time. Hey, what gives? Those were my camels. You won't be needing them anymore. Those must have been my parents. Who cares? Your time has come. Stand still. This will only hurt a lot. It's been nice knowing ya. Thanks for saving my parents. What do you mean by the- Whoa, he fell into the void. But wait, what's this? He dropped a staff. I retrieved his mighty weapon. And from here on out, I decided I am a god. From days 58 through 61, I decided I wanted to test out my newfound abilities. Let's see who deserves to be extinguished from this race. Oh, I know. I traveled until I found some wolves huddled up. Ooh, looky here, boyos. Fresh meat. Not so fast. Feel the power of Anubis. I struck them down with force and payback for what their kind did to me at the start of the race. I should really stop holding grudges. Now what? Oh shoot, I need to find Raffi. I ventured all the way back to where I had last left Raffi. As I approached the bush, I saw the tiger run out and into the distance. Raffi, buddy, please tell me you're in there and that that tiger didn't eat you. Why would you keep it a secret that they were dead? Is that it, Bronzo? Whoa, Raffi, where are you coming from with this? My parents? Why didn't you tell me they were dead and that your parents killed them? Raffi, I was gonna tell you. It was just I couldn't bring myself to tell you I knew it would devastate you. Who even told you? That tiger. He heard you confess in the night. I thought we were friends. Raffi, come on, buddy. We can't fight now. The race is halfway done. I can't even look at you. This is goodbye, Bronzo. Wait, Raffi, come back. It was too late. Raffi was gone. Days 62 through 65 were very lonely. Raffi was gone, and it was all thanks to that stupid tiger. No, I should have been honest with him from the start. Poor Raffi. I hope he's safe. If things didn't seem bad enough, it suddenly started raining as well. Oh, come on. Not now. I looked for shelter and found a small cave entrance. I walked in to try to get some cover and then looked back outside. I still haven't found my parents. The curses are getting worse, and I keep losing my companions I make along the way. <sighs> I really hope things do get better soon. As I was watching from the cave, I noticed two pigs outside playing in the rain. I wish Raffi was here. I bet he'd love the rain too. I have to keep going for my family and to apologize to Raffi if I ever find him again. I fell asleep while thinking of my parents and my friend, but I was awoken by cave spiders. Ouch, dumb spiders, get away from me. Can't you see I'm sad here? The spiders had numbers on me and I didn't want to die in a cave. So I ran away back into the rain. Why, Sphinx, why? Looks like you're having a good day. I'm done with this race. I just want my family and friends back. You only had one, and he's gone. Ugh! You're gonna pay for this, I'm telling ya. Well, have fun in the rain, for now. Oh, whatever. In the middle of the night, for days 66 through 70, I was brought with a new curse. Welcome to the next leg of your journey. Hope you like jackal beasts. A horde of jackal beasts spawned in and attacked me. Stay back 
you nasties! I fought against the jackal beasts with all of my might, but I was starting to lose hope. This was just all too much, and my thoughts were not helping. Ah, I feel so lost! I began accepting the inevitable. I kept fighting, but I couldn't shake off this feeling. I felt sorry for lying to Rafi. Sorry for myself for not reuniting with my family. I was a ball of disappointment. There's too many. I can't do this! Just then, Rafi came in to save the day! You're not doing this without me, Bronzo! Ugh. Rafi! We fought together and took down the jackals with our awesome teamwork. Oh, Rafi, it's so good to see you. I'm so sorry I let you down. Really, I feel so awful. Save it for later, Bronzo. We got another boss to fight. We brought out our sharpest weapons and charged at the monster as it slithered towards us. Slay its three heads. It was an Osvermus, and it jumped out from the ground and began fighting against us by shooting blood at us and hiding under the ground to protect itself when we would try to attack them. But the Osvermus couldn't get away for long, and we defeated the wretched monster. Good fight, Bronzo. Now, let's keep moving. We have no time to waste. Would you forgive me, Raffi? I just didn't want to break your heart. Well, you did. Some honesty would have been great, but I forgive you. After all, we only got each other. After all this time, I finally felt a weight off my shoulders. Raffi and I made a portal on days 71 through 74 and headed home. All right, let's go back to the base for some preparations. We went through the portal and arrived home. All right, we need to come up with a plan to kill the tiger. Okay, I'm thinking I can distract them while you go in for the kill. Hmm, yeah, that could work. I've talked to the tiger before. This time, I'll persuade him to give me some answers if I give him some fresh meat in return. So we should go hunting. Oh, smart. He can't deny some fresh meat. But first, we're gonna need to be better prepared to take him down. You're right. I don't think my armor can take another fight. Why don't we get hunting and then mining after? Good idea. Let's go. After some planning, we headed outside looking for something tasty to hunt and found some chickens nearby. Ooh, this is perfect. Attack! We killed the chickens and took the meat with us. We began phase two of our plan preparations on days 75 through 78. All right, Raffi, it's time to upgrade our armor. We found a cave and decided to split up in order to find diamonds more quickly. I searched for a while before finding a few diamonds in the ceiling. Using my tall legs, I had no problem reaching them. Being tall is awesome. I continued until I almost had enough for a full diamond armor set. Okay, just three more and I'll be set. I decided to take a quick break and go check on Raffi. Raffi. When I got back to where I had seen him last, he was nowhere in sight. Raffi! Oh no, where did he go? Don't worry, I'm still here. I looked over to where I heard his voice and saw a hole in the wall leading to a long tunnel. Oh, what are you doing there? Raffi came back out of the tunnel looking happy. I was branch mining and I got pretty lucky too. I have more than enough for full armor now. Do you still need any? That's awesome. Could I have three diamonds? He handed me the diamonds and we left the cave to craft our new armor. Let's see that tiger try to bite through diamond. On days 79 through 82, it was time to execute our plan, Operation Cat in the Bag. Are you ready to finish this? Yeah, this tiger has been manipulating us for a while now. I think he deserves what's coming to him. One thing, where is he? Luckily, he told me where his hiding place was. Tried to get me to join his pyramid scheme or something. Perfect, after you then. For a while, I followed Raffi all the way to the jungle area. Okay, he should be around here somewhere. I'll make some noise to attract him to me. Great, I'll hide around here. Turtle, turtle, turtle! I brought you some delicious meats! Well, thank you, old friend. Did you finally decide to leave that old camel behind and join me? Yes, I did. I hate that camel for what he did to me and my parents. Good, good. Now, let's get out of here before we're spotted. Not so fast, kitty. I knew this was a trap. Well, you should have trusted your instincts. The tiger put up a battle and clearly wanted both Raffi and I dead. I think it's time your little turtle friend dies. No, take this. I then pulled out Anubis's staff and struck down onto the tiger. Long live the king. Nice.
Days 83 through 86 felt much safer with the tiger now gone. We still had plenty to worry about though. The race was still going. My parents were still missing and creatures continued to die from the Sphinx's awful curses. When is this race going to end? I can't believe no one else has won yet. I certainly can. Those curses are brutal. I'm amazed we've gotten this far. Speaking of curses, how about another one? I have unleashed several locust swarms into the lands to hunt anyone still racing. Oh great, just what we needed. You're telling me. A small herd of nearby mobs stormed past in fear. The chaos blocked my vision and I couldn't see the ground in front of me. Hey, watch out, I don't want to step on anyone. While I was trying to avoid the other creatures, I had accidentally stumbled towards a large hole without realizing. Where did that come from? I lost my balance and fell down the hole, and I ended up hitting my head on the way down. I barely heard Raffi calling for me as my eyes started to close. I awoke to another vision on days 87 through 90. I was lucky the pit wasn't as deep as I feared. My head still pounded from hitting it in the fall, but I could see my parents still searching for me. He has to be here somewhere. I know my son is still alive. He is. We will find him. Don't worry, mom and dad. I am alive. I found you both too. Suddenly, I noticed my mom looking at something and yelling excitingly. Bronzo, look here, I see him. What? That's not possible. We're not even in the same biome. My son, you're safe. I mean, yes, I am. But how do you guys? I finally noticed another camel just a bit ahead of them. He looked just like me. What? Who the heck is that? Something seemed off. The mystery camel wasn't moving at all and wasn't responding to my parents. I also noticed the ground in front of them looked odd and I panicked. I realized my parents were running right towards a hole in the ground, one even deeper than the one I'd fallen in. Wait, mom, dad, it's a trap. My baby, I'm so happy to see you again. They still couldn't hear me. As they got closer, the other me disappeared. It's just a mirage. Pronto! The vision ended as they fell. I felt powerless knowing that my parents had died. You led Anubis into a hole. This is only fair, don't you think? No, it's not. My parents weren't running around killing creatures. True. Oh well, it's too late now. You horrible sphinx. How could you? Raffi heard me yelling and called down from the top of the hole. Bronzo, what's wrong? What happened? Are you okay? My parents, they're gone, Raffi. Oh no, I'm so sorry, Bronzo. I thanked Raffi and carefully made my way out of the hole before going off to be alone for a bit. After a while, I remembered the wish the Sphinx had told me about and found my determination again. That's it, I'm going to win this race and wish for my parents to be revived. With that, I went to rest and got ready for the next day. On days 91 through 93, I was feeling more determined than ever before. I'm going to win this race, no matter what. I believe in you, Bronzo. With this much motivation, we'll finish it in no time. We continued traveling and walked through a desert when we suddenly started hearing some cries. Do you hear that? Hmm, I do. And it sounds like it's really close to us. Look out! An eagle jumped from a mountain of sand and landed right next to us. Hi. Oh, hey, little guy. Were you the one that was crying? Yeah, I'm lost and I broke my wing. That sounds like a personal problem. I can't race with this broken wing, so I'm just trying to hide while I heal. Well, crying won't help you stay undercover. Hmm. Oh, why don't you come with us? We'll take you to our base. You can hide there. Really? Okay. Let's go through this portal. Follow us. We went through the portal and arrived back home. Hey, Raffi, give him some food. You'll be okay. I'm going to build you a room. Thank you. You're so kind. No problem. Raffi, help me out. You got it. We began building a room for our new friend. I added some nice touches to make it cozy. And then I showed him the final product. He was so excited and happy. What do you think? Whoa, I've never had a room before. This is so epic. Thank you so much. He jumped all around his room with so much joy. And then Raffi and I got back to business. From days 94 through 96, Raffi and I were ready to set off on our final and most important adventure, getting to that finish line. Let's go, Raffi. As we were on our way towards the finish line, the Sphinx spoke to us. So close, Bronzo. Let's spice things up, shall we? 
His true form was then released from his statue prison, and he unleashed some unburied that began attacking us. Ah, stay back, you freaks. We got this. Are you at the finish line? The unburied were fierce and bombarded us as we watched the Sphinx disappear into the distance. There's so many! We can't give up now! We're so close! It was a long battle, and I kept shooting them with lightning so they would burn in the fire. And eventually, we took down the undead foes. But I felt very weak. Man, I feel like we need more skills if we want to take down the Sphinx. I agree. Those are just his minions and I already feel drained. Just then, we saw Ellie come back. It's so good to see you, Bronzo. Oh, and I have good news. Ellie, did you find your tribe where you were going? Yes, I did. I needed to find you again and share this with you. Any updates since I've been gone? Oh, that's great. Well, we're on our way to the finish line right now. I'm not gonna lie. We're feeling a bit defeated after our last fight. I think we're gonna need some training if we want to take down the Sphinx. Hmm, I think I know someone who could help train you. His name is Trellis. My friend trained with him, and now he's in the Olympics. Whoa, that's perfect! Where can I find him? I think I have the coordinates in my notebook somewhere. Hold on. She pulled out a piece of paper and gave it to me. Here you go. Just follow these coordinates and you'll find him. Thank you, Ellie. On days 97 through 98, we followed the coordinates and it led us to Trellis, who had a little home in the tundra, in the middle of the icy spikes. All right, this is it. As soon as we approached his cave home, he turned around and welcomed us. Hello, visitors. Hi, Trellis. I'm Bronzo, and this is my buddy Raffi. Hey, nice to meet you guys. So what brings you around here? My friend Ellie recommended your training. I need to improve my fighting skills if I want to defeat my enemy, the Sphinx. Ah, well, you're in luck. I have a few targets in a freshly frozen river I might need you to cross. I'm up for any challenge. Yeah, I like the attitude. Let's do it now, follow me. We followed him out of the icy spikes, where he had his obstacle courses. All right then, we should begin with some aiming. Here's a bow and arrow. I shot several targets, trying my best to improve my aiming skills along the way. And then he had me do an agility test. Make it to the finish line, you have 20 seconds. I rode as fast as I could and I actually did pretty well. Oh nice, I didn't know camels could be that fast. I'm impressed. Finally, Trellis handed me a shield, and he had me fight against some strays that were nearby. Ooh, these creatures are feisty. Watch out! Gah! You're going down! Thanks to my training, this fight was way too easy. I killed them all in a few seconds, and finally finished the test. Yeah, I think you're right in there, Bronzo. It was very good. I feel much stronger now. I better get going. Thank you so much. Yeah, good luck. On day 99, Raffi and I ran swiftly through the open streets of the dark forest, leaving the other competitors in the dust. I'm so full. I shouldn't eat all those cookies. I think I'm gonna... Dang, we need to speed up. Tell me about it. I don't think I can make it to the end. We're much faster than that, we can make it! We kept moving and passed several other competitors who were more aggressive as we got closer to the end. We have to watch out for the sneaky opponents. Before we knew it, snakes appeared from some bushes and slithered towards us in full attack mode. Die, you snakes! Take that, you filthy creatures! Ugh, why did it have to be snakes? We slayed their heads and continued moving on. Then we saw a sort of village that stretched on towards the finish line. We're almost there! The path was growing more and more turbulent. And then some gorillas started throwing banana peels on the track to slow us down. Whoa! Watch out! Ah! <sighs> that was close. Look! Bronzo! All these people are cheering us on! Oh! They must have hit the notification bell so they would never miss a new video! We were on the home stretch, and we noticed so many animals quitting right before the finish line. Meanwhile, Raffi and I were on our way to become the winners of the race. Finally, on day 100, we reached the finish line and encountered the Sphinx in its true form. I thought I wanted to win, but now I just want to kill you, Sphinx. Luckily for you, the race isn't over until you defeat me in battle. Why, you little! The Sphinx attacked me, so I charged him with full force, unleashing my rage onto him. This is all your fault, all the hardships I had to go through. And did this not make you a stronger camel? You are too blind to see this. 
the Sphinx kept using some red energy balls that he would shoot at us, as well as using his Void Core powers. I don't think you're going to make it. <laughs> you don't stand a chance against us, Sphinx. You get it, Bronzo. It was a long battle, but eventually I killed the Sphinx and his soul went back into the statue. Finally, I crossed the finish line and won the race. What is your wish? My wish? I thought long and hard about it, but deep down, I knew what I really wanted. I wish, I wish that our parents were here to celebrate our victory with us. Your wish is my command. Mom, Dad, Brother! Brother!